welcome back. This is the last video on storage. We still have some other topics to go through in our hardware section. The last video was kind of long. We talked about the hard drive as well as the memory. This should be a bit shorter. Let's talk about what we call removable storage, removable media. What we're looking at here is storage that we can take out of the computer and take it around wherever we go. The first ones we have are your optical disks and drives. Now, quick thing here as far as disk versus drive. The disk is the actual physical thing that you're carrying around. So for example, let me go off camera here, I have DVDs. These are DVD disks. These are physical disks. They go into a drive. So if I was to take a DVD out and put it on my computer, where it's going into is the drive. So disks versus drives. We have the CDs, the DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. What happens here is a laser, a laser projects a concentrated beam of light towards the disc. So you've got this laser going in and it's going to hit the bottom of the disc. Is the laser reflected or is the laser scattered and not reflected? If it's reflected, we call that hitting a land. A flat surface, it's read as a one, meaning turned on. If it hits what we call a pit, a depression, it's scattered. The information is not returned. This is read as a zero. So one, zero, we've talked about that before. So what are the general differences, though, between a CD, a DVD, and a Blu-ray? It has to do with the size of the laser. How precise is the laser? So the CD laser might be like this big, and I'm exaggerating here. But you have a CD that goes with a laser. A DVD laser is smaller. And so with a smaller laser, you can write more. It's the difference between having a huge jumbo marker versus a more fine tip marker. And then the Blu-rays is even a more precise marker. With a Blu-ray, because you have such a small laser, you're able to read DVDs. But you can't use a DVD laser to read Blu-rays. Just like you can use a DVD laser to read a CD, but you can't use a CD laser to read a DVD because, again, the size of the laser is so much bigger from CD. Okay, CDs are big. DVDs, Blu-ray. So you can always go backwards. You can always go down towards the older tech with this stuff as opposed to going the opposite way, which makes sense because if you could read a Blu-ray with a CD, you wouldn't buy the Blu-ray, right? So moving on. Here's something that can save you some money. If you happen to have a CD stuck in your drive, let's say your computer and you got a CD or DVD stuck in there, there is a easy way to eject it. If the normal way doesn't eject it, there's an easy way to eject it. It's a universal CD, DVD ejector. It's a paper clip. And what you want to do is you want to unbend the paper clip and in the front of the drive, there's a, like a little pinhole. You want to put that paper clip that you've opened up and you want to push it in and feel for an eject button. You want to push it down and you will manually eject the drive. Now don't laugh because I've charged people and I've been places that have charged people 50, 60 bucks to do it. I know what you're thinking, 50, 60 bucks. It's the knowledge that's expensive. It's the knowledge that you're getting right now by going through these videos, by going through your class that you charge for. You don't charge for the equipment. All right, next one is your old time floppy drive. Some of you might not have ever worked with a floppy disk or a floppy drive. These things are what we call legacy devices. These things are being phased out. The last version was a 3.5 inch floppy. Again, these are really old tech. So chances are you're probably not gonna run into them. Although when I worked for the government, they still use these things for some things. It's sad. All right, then we have something called read-only memory, otherwise known as ROM. We had RAM, which is random access memory. Now we have something called ROM, read-only memory. This is a special type of RAM that doesn't need electricity to keep its information. So it stores the information when the power's off. It's not volatile like the RAM is. ROM is no longer just read-only. The nomenclature of read-only came from the old days when it really was read-only. The name just kind of stuck as the technology has advanced. You might hear ROM being called something called firmware. For example, your phones, your tablets, 
have firmware, it has ROM. You might be able to update your firmware or your ROM. I had a massive update on my phone not that long ago when they released a new operating system. I've had to update my printer. And this is called flashing your ROM. Kind of funny sounding, but this is what it's called. You're updating your firmware, you're flashing your firmware, you're upgrading it. Uh, some different types of ROM over the years. This might be FYI for your class, it might not. So we'll cover it anyways. You had PROM, uh, PROM, PROM which was programmable read-only memory. This came from the factory with all the information on it. You could not update it. You could not change it. Then we had EEPROM, which was erasable programmable read-only memory. To update this, you had to blast it with some very strong UV rays. Then we had EEPROM, which was electronically erasable. You could actually change this with electricity from the computer or other devices. Now we have flash memory. If you look at a flash drive, a USB um, drive, this is what we're looking at here. It's flash memory. It's a type of EEPROM, very similar to flash drive. So this stuff can be updated pretty simply. Now here's a word of caution. You can really destroy your devices if you don't do the firmware update correctly. This has gotten easier over the years, but still you can mess up a device pretty thoroughly if you mess up the firmware because the firmware is where the core of what that software is. So if you mess that up, you can really mess up your device. So some general rules to pay attention to is to pay attention to updates. This is not something you wanna to set to update and then walk away from. You kinda of wanna keep an eye on it. Make sure your device is plugged in. If you are going to update your phone with some brand new firmware, make sure either you got one heck of a charge or it's plugged in because this will kill your battery fairly quickly and you don't want the battery to die in the middle of a firmware update. And make sure you don't lose power during the update. So if you're doing an update on, let's say, your computer, your desktop, don't do it during a massive thunderstorm. That would be bad. All right, in our next video, we're going to take a look at input and output devices.